I know. In this channel, we grill and smoke a lot. But guess what? No grill, no problem. No smoker, no problem. Rainy day, no problem. So today, you are going to learn how to cook the perfect tomahawk ribeye in your oven using my favorite method, reverse sear. I know you want that edge to edge, even doneness on your next steak, or even better, a tomahawk ribeye, and you don't know how to do it without a grill or smoker? Well, you've come to the right place. And even though I'm gonna say a few controversial things in this video, I will show you how to get a restaurant quality tomahawk ribeye steak without ever leaving your kitchen. But if you were my neighbor, you would be here eating with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce you to the star of the show, Mr. Tomahawk. This giant tomahawk ribeye is one of the most visually impressive steaks money can buy. Showcasing a thick, chunk of ribeye at one end and usually at least 6 to 8 inches of bone handle, which it makes it the ultimate meat lollipop. Reverse sears is quite simple. It is a method of bringing the temperature of the meat up slowly and evenly in a low temperature environment of around 250 degrees or 120 Celsius. You will absolutely nail the medium rare with this method and enjoy the most impressive meat experiences you can ever have at home. And let me tell you something, once you nail this cook, you will definitely get major credits as a steak expert among your friends and family. Believe you me. Now, let's get started. The first thing to see here is the steak. This is something you can't ignore when cooked to perfection and served on a table. I got this monster from my favorite store, Brower Meat and Fish. They have it all for the best prices and every piece of meat is customizable. All you need to do is ask the butchers to cut it how you like it and they'll definitely make it happen. This gorgeous beauty comes in a pack of three and Eric did a great job cutting it and making it look beautiful. But the main thing you need to keep in mind when buying a tomahawk steak or a ribeye steak is that the cap is the most delicious piece of meat beef can offer. The ribeye itself is composed by two different parts. The one in the middle is the eye, which is always nice and tender, and is the main reason that makes ribeye steaks a little bit cheap. The other main part, and the one that makes the ribeye steak one of the best steaks in the entire cow, will be the ribeye cap. This is the section that covers the eye, and is the most tender and flavorful component of the ribeye steak. Whenever you are in the market buying a ribeye steak, make sure you get the one with the biggest cap on it. You can then come back to this video and thank me in the comments. <laughs> Another significant thing in the tomahawk steak is the bone. This, of course, is something that you pay for but won't eat, but for presentation, a ribeye with the bone makes a huge difference. Look at this one with this little bone. Come on, don't let them lie to you. Size matters. But that's enough picking on little bones. Let's get this baby rolling. And here, you will hear me say another controversial statement. I don't add oil to my meat. Jeb, when you add salt to the meat and let it rest, the salt will penetrate the cells on the surface of the steak, making it release water. Meaning, less moist outside of the steak, meaning better searing at the end. Based on my experiments, oil will create a layer between the meat and the salt and will not allow as much penetration, affecting how crusty and crispy the steak becomes after the searing process. What else can we add to the steak? The only spice that will not change the meat flavor will be freshly ground pepper. After all, you pay some good money for this tomahawk ribeye steak, and changing its flavor will be a capital sin. Now it's time to let it rest. Don't touch it! Leave it there on the table for 30 to 45 minutes, and allow the meat to get to room temperature. That will do two things. One, will open the fibers of the meat, allowing the heat to penetrate evenly and two, will prevent your steak from looking great in the outside and red in the middle. We really want to get a steak that is evenly cooked from edge to edge, and resting at room temperature makes all the difference. This is pro stuff, guys. Listen to the ninja. <laughs> 
Now, this is the perfect time to prepare a sauce to go with your steak. So, what do you think will be the only sauce that doesn't alter the flavor of the meat but enhance it to the max? Red wine sauce, mushroom sauce, or chimichurri sauce? The right answer is chimichurri. Chimichurri is the only adequate sauce for this kind of steak, and it's not because it is Argentinian or because I love Argentina and so on. It's because it is creating a way that it balances the pH of the components of the sauce and only adds the necessary tanginess to the meat that takes it to another level. There is 1,000 recipes of chimichurri, but after trying a lot of them, I will go with the one I like the most. For that, I will add four garlic cloves and salt to my mortar and grind it until it looks like a paste. Once that is done, I will add a handful of cilantro, one tablespoon of dry oregano, one tablespoon of cumin, one teaspoon of chili flakes, this is the tangy stuff, one lime juice, one tablespoon of black pepper, and half a cup of olive oil. Mix it well and let it rest. The longer you allow it to rest, the more tasty it will be. I make it sometimes the day before and keep it cool in the fridge. Now, back to the steak. Heat up your oven at 250 degrees or 120 Celsius for 15 minutes. But before you put your steak in the oven, there is a crucial piece of equipment we need, and that is a thermometer. Set your thermometer in the thickest part of the steak, as far away from the bone as possible. Sit your steak on an oven sheet and put the steak straight in the oven. We will remove the steak from the oven as soon as it gets to 120 degrees internally, that is 48 degrees Celsius. Once that is done, take it out and put it to rest on the counter. The other thing we will use in this cook will be this huge griddle. It is a cheap one I picked on Amazon more than two years ago for about 20 bucks, and as you can see, it's still in mint condition. I will set it right on the stove top and set the heat to high. I want this griddle to be ripping hot before I set my steak on it. To get those awesome grill marks, I will use this area to sear the steak and leave it there for about two minutes. At that point, I will reset the steak to get those nice square shapes and do the same on the other side. One very important step is to remember to let your tomahawk rest. Rest there for a minimum of 10 minutes, but 15 minutes is even better when you're dealing with such a massive steak. Now, it is time to cut our tomahawk and see if we did a good job. If you get these results, all I can say is great job. And guess what? You deserve it. Tomahawk ribeye is certainly not an everyday steak, but then again, it is not every day that you get to eat like the Flintstones. What do you guys think about this baby we have here, man? This is a showstopper. Guys, <laughs> the heat in Florida Whoa. is crazy. It's not heat. It's the humidity. It's so nasty. It's horrible. I'm sweating like a pig. But <laughs> this baby is looking good. There is. So let's dig into it. I can't wait. Let's try it. Let's dig into it. Let's go. Uh, oh, my piece. Got you. Piece. I don't need a knife. Oh, look. We don't even need a knife. Can we do it with the back? Yes, we can. Let's see. Let's see. Can we do it with the back? Yes, we can. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, you Ready? have it, guys. Let's, go. let's give it a try. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you nailed it. Wow. Wow. Guys, this thing is delicious, brother. Ninja approved. Even, <laughs> even Mr. Georgia down there is going crazy. Oh, yes, he is. Guys, crust. listen to me. Make it in the oven, mm -hmm. all right? Forget about subi. I know it's a big word. You can make it. This is... Guys, this is crazy. Try it. Try yep. it. One day, put sous on the side mm -hmm. and give the oven a try. Oh and God. you are going to be impressed. Did you see that evenness of the color? Yes. Everything yeah. is produced perfect. Oh, yes. It and, is. and there is not a lot of things to do. That's something that you already have at home. You know how to use. You don't have to go crazy and buying stuff and none of those things. All you have to do is put them in the oven 
let it be at 250 degrees, which is 120 Celsius. <laughs> We're Americans. <laughs> let it grow the internal temperature to the point that I explained already. And guys, perfect. You're going to be amazed. Oh, yeah. This thing. You'll be an expert. Wow. <laughs> Believe it or not. If Let me give a try to that chimichurri there because I haven't tried mm -hmm. it. Do it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Wow. I'm trying to look for the right words to describe this steak, but this is this is beefy. It is strong beefy. It is tender. It is tasty. It is amazing. Guys, this thing is crazy good. I it say is. I said delicious already, but I'm about to say it again because this <laughs> thing deserves it. Oh yes, it does. And as you can see, the price is right. The process is easy. Yes, it is. Everything is good. And the chimichurri, if you never, if you never tried that chimichurri recipe and leaving the whole thing in the description, you can check it out really easy and enhances the flavors of the meat as you have no idea. You know how much they charge you in a steakhouse for this? The same thing? How much? 131 bucks. Damn. What steakhouse that? Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with you? <laughs> I mean, if you, if you can, if you can really chew into this, Little bone. Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> Guys, let me ask you something. Did we make you hungry? Did we? If we made you hungry, you had to hit us with the like. Lots of lots of likes. Subscribe to the channel. Share yes, with your so. friends and family. And let me know down there in the comments if you ever tried this before. The way we made it here, of course, Tomahawk, a lot of people try it because it's amazing and it looks, it looks great. But let me know if you it. ever tried it in the oven. Cooking this way, you don't really need a grill. It tastes delicious. It doesn't wrap anything from the grill. Yes, you are not having the shako flavor, but it tastes amazing without amazing. it too. The beef. So you let me know down down in the comments and let me tell you something. Go ahead. I love you. <laughs> we love you too. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.